NVIDIA is now worth about $4.15 trillion. To put that in perspective, that's more than the GDP of 189 out of 194 countries. If NVIDIA were a country, it'd be sitting at the big kids' table, right next to the US, China, Germany, India, and Japan and ahead of just about everyone else. To get why NVIDIA blew up, we gotta look at the revenue stream. And who better to explain than Jensen Huang himself? Mr. Huang, NVIDIA just pulled in $46.7 billion last quarter. That's a 56% jump from last year. How do you even explain that? Easy. Data centers made 41 billion. Gaming only did 4.3 billion. So apparently people care more about training Skynet than playing Call of Duty. Okay, but annual revenue in 2023 was $27 billion, then $61 billion in 2024, and now $130 billion in 2025. That's like I, doubling every time. Normal companies don't do that. Yeah, but normal companies don't get worshipped by AI startups throwing billions at GPUs either. We just sell the shovels in the AI gold rush. So what you're saying is one product line basically turned you into a $4 trillion empire? Pretty much. And honestly, this is just the warm-up. Surprising revenue, right? But for a $4 trillion company, maybe not. The bigger question is, how did NVIDIA become so big in the first place? To answer that, we have to rewind to the early days of NVIDIA. NVIDIA was founded on April 5th, 1993 at a Denny's Diner in San Jose. I can't keep doing this 9 to 5 stuff, man. Feels like my brain is melting. Yeah. I didn't get into engineering just to fix printers and debug other people's code. We should be building something big. Exactly. Something great. What if we start our own company? Okay, that's cool, but what would we even make? We can't just sell floppy disks like every other startup. Think bigger. 3D graphics. Gaming. It's going to be massive. Trust me. We build the chips. The world plays on them. All right, fine. But what do we even call this thing? Because all of Jensen's project files are literally named Next Version. Yeah, imagine pitching investors with Next Version Incorporated. Sounds like a knockoff cereal brand. Okay, what about something with envy? Because people are going to be jealous of our chips. Found one. NVIDIA. Latin for envy. Goddess with green eyes, poison tongue, very dramatic. So basically we're naming ourselves after jealousy? Exactly. Gamers will be green with envy. Plus, it sounds way cooler than next version 3.0. And that's basically how NVIDIA was born. So next time you're sitting with your friends in a cafe, just remember, you might be brainstorming the next trillion dollar company. The difference is, Jensen, Chris, and Curtis weren't just dreamers. They were experienced engineers. One came from AMD, another from Sun Microsystems. They knew what they were doing. Now you'd think with that kind of talent, starting NVIDIA would be smooth like butter, right? Well, not exactly. Here's what happened. Jensen, just tell us straight, how much time do we have? 30 days, maybe less. We're basically one bad month from being done. 30 days? Man, we built this company on coffee and hope, and even hope's running out. We poured everything into NV1. Sound card, controller ports, 3D graphics. We thought people would love the all-in-one thing. We tried to do too much, and we bet on the wrong horse. Quadratic rendering was clever, but the world picked DirectX. We weren't aligned with the standard. That's on us. So what now? We close up shop? Go beg AMD for our old jobs back? No, Sega needs a graphics chip for their console. If we can deliver that, we stay alive. It buys us time. We can pivot. Pivot to what? What's the new play? Standards, performance, no more fancy proprietary experiments. From here on out, we chase speed. We build the fastest chip, and we make sure it works with Microsoft's DirectX, because that's where the whole industry is going. So the lesson is, we can be geniuses, but if we're not in sync with the ecosystem, we die. Exactly. Innovation doesn't matter if no one can use it. The next product won't just be clever, it'll be useful, and it'll be fast. All right, 30 days. Let's make them count. Right after that, in 1997, NVIDIA launched the Riva 128. It sold over a million units, became their first real hit, and pulled the company back from the edge of bankruptcy. NVIDIA was finally on the map. By 1999, they were ready for something bigger, the GeForce 256. Along with it came a brand new term, the GPU, or Graphics Processing Unit. And this time, it wasn't just marketing. The breakthrough was a transform and lighting engine built directly into the chip. Before this, the CPU had to grind through all the heavy 3D math. With GeForce 256, the GPU finally stepped in and said, don't worry, I'll take it from here. That shift made the graphics card more than just an accessory. It became a processor in its own right. And the idea of parallel computing, chips working through massive calculations at the same time, later became the backbone of artificial intelligence data centers and basically most of the AI headlines we see today. So NVIDIA already had the graphics cards, but in 2006 they dropped something even bigger, CUDA. Now it wasn't hardware, CUDA was software. Basically a toolkit that lets you use the GPU's horsepower for way more than just graphics. 
Think of it like this. Before, the GPU was that one kid in class who only drew really good pictures. CUDA suddenly let that kid solve math problems, do science experiments, and still ace art. And developers could use normal coding languages like C++ to make it happen. At first it looked like a weird long-term bet, costly to build and honestly only a handful of people cared. But almost immediately, the creative world started picking it up. Video editors using Premiere and DaVinci Resolve realized they could play timelines smoothly instead of waiting forever for renders. 3D artists with V-Ray and Octane watched lighting and ray tracing jobs finish in minutes instead of overnight. That was the first real proof that the GPU wasn't just about drawing pixels, it could compute. Eventually, that same parallel architecture turned out to be perfect for training neural networks. So when the AI boom hit a decade later, the entire field was already running on CUDA. Fast forward to today, and gaming is no longer NVIDIA's main business. Its most powerful chips, like the H100 Tensor Core GPU, aren't designed for players at home. They're shipped in massive quantities to build AI data centers. The data center division has become by far the most profitable part of the company. It doesn't just help AI companies. It also helps the people who actually own NVIDIA stock. NVIDIA recently announced a 10 for 1 stock split. Here's what that means. Each share gets divided into 10. Your overall investment doesn't change, but the price per share drops, making it easier to buy. Example, if you own 10 shares at $1,000 each, that's $10,000 total. After the split, you'd have 100 shares at $100 each. Still $10,000, just sliced into smaller pieces. For employees, retail traders, and new investors, a lower share price feels way more accessible. And historically, splits create a psychological boost, bringing in more buyers and improving liquidity. Companies usually only do this when they're confident the stock will keep climbing. But the big question investors are asking now is, can NVIDIA actually survive an AI bubble? Critics say NVIDIA's valuation is built on speculative future growth, a classic bubble setup. If AI spending slows down, the company could see a sharp correction, like what happened in the dot-com bust. Supporters argue this isn't hype, it's a structural shift. NVIDIA owns the hardware, the CUDA ecosystem, and the developer community. In this view, NVIDIA isn't a bubble stock. It's the picks and shovels company of a new industrial revolution. In the end, whether NVIDIA survives an AI bubble comes down to one thing, demand. If data centers and enterprises keep buying GPUs at scale, NVIDIA's position remains strong. If that demand slows, the stock will be put to the test. So NVIDIA's story isn't just about AI startups living or dying, it's also about whether your portfolio survives. For companies building AI, NVIDIA is basically their oxygen tank. For investors, it's the same bet, that this isn't a bubble, it's the backbone of the future. What do you think? Does NVIDIA ride the wave or does it faceplant? Drop your answer in the comments and smash that subscribe button like it's a GPU restock on launch day.